And we want your voices to be heard. And we've invited some speakers today and some people who I love and I've stood on the front lines with and I've been to their communities. And they fight for their children and they fight for the futures of their children and the next generations. And they, they sacrifice a lot. They sacrifice time at work. They sacrifice time with their families because they know how important this is. One of those ladies is a lady called Julie Field who has been fighting this hard in her community for many years. She's a mother, she's an educator, she has her own business. Believe it or not, like many of us, she has a job and she still fights fracking. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, where are you, Julie? Here she, here she comes. Ladies and gentlemen, can you put your hands together and give a massive welcome to Julie Fields? Well, good afternoon everybody. It's so wonderful to see so many people here with all the same goals. Um, you'll have to excuse me, I've never done anything like this before. It's quite intimidating looking out there and seeing so many people. So, my voice gets a bit shaky, I'm sorry. I'm very new to this. So, my name is Julie um, and I'm local to the uh, Springs Road proposed fracking site. And I say proposed because they haven't yet fracked, so that's a good thing. Um, I've always lived in the same area um, and stayed when I became a mother, so my children could enjoy the luxury of a healthy, rural environment. Not realising that down the line we would be classed as sensitive receptors living in the desolate north. Last time I checked, we were far from desolate. Watching all of this unfold over the last few years has shaken me to my core. So much so that if you told me five years ago I'd be standing here talking and campaigning, I would have laughed you away, but here we are. This is what's happening all over the country. As mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters start to hear about fracking, we're compelled to do something. We're compelled to get involved. And we need to get involved. We need the power of the people to stand shoulder to shoulder and say no to this industry. I've done everything in my power through the democratic process, but I found myself in this position and I refuse to back down for the sake of all our children. The more I learn, the more it makes me want to fight, and we can win this. Already delivery companies have pulled out, not wanting to be associated with this dirty industry. Share prices have hit the floor and more and more people are waking up to the corruption and lies. We're supposed to have faith in the different agencies to look after and protect our environment. However, one lack of total incompetence, uh, total competence is from the Environment Agency. Egden Resources are wanting to acid frack at Wrestle Miss The Environment Agency gave them a permit but the majority of the information was incorrect. The membrane was not fit for purpose and had been eaten away by the local rabbit population. Then there are the watering monitoring boreholes, which is uphill to the well. Plus many more problems, not all noted by an astute member of the public during an appeal site visit. The scary part of this is that nobody at the EA had checked and freely gave the permit. After many appeals, Egdon should have restored the site by the end of April. But instead of doing this, they applied again for the planning and used the same permit from the Environment Agency. This fight is to be continued. <laughs> Over in Sleepy Mistlethorpe and North Kelsey, 
begged and have been allowed to discharge fluids into the crystal clear chalk stream. I often have to pinch myself to see if this is just a tragic nightmare. We should have faith in our regulators to oversee, but the reality is this does not happen. We keep getting told gold standards, yet I am yet to see this. It scares the hell out of me to think that this and much more would be overlooked if it weren't for the amazing people constantly checking. Just like the fabulous work that's just been done over at PNR. All the people tirelessly working and monitoring to make sure these companies take the responsibility seriously and also keeping them very much on their toes. And with the unjust prison sentences handed out to the, utter, to the three utterly selfless protectors a few weeks ago, we realise we are the lion. But we are the many, and we can make a huge noise. <laughs> this is the biggest threat we as communities in pedal licence areas have had in our lifetime. I guess who have got two sites local to me, one at Tinker Lane and one at Mizzen, have never fracked one well. We're about to be guinea pigs and I am not about to roll over and allow this to happen. Don't... <laughs> Don't look back and wish I say I tried. Look back and be proud you got out of your homes and made a difference. This is our home, not the fracking company's science lab, and let's keep it that way. Thank you, Julie Fields. You meet amazing inspirational people, so thank you to everyone. Um, the next person that I'm going to introduce has been a massive and pivotal part in raising awareness about fracking at our nearest fracking site, Eckington, uh, Marsh Lane, near Eckington. Girls, do you want to sing in a minute? We'll do another song later. Uh, so. David Kesteven is going to come to the microphone and introduce himself better than I can with these guys around me. Okay, thank you. Hiya, you're right. Hello. I'm accustomed as I am to public speaking and all that. Um, I was asked to speak in five minutes about what it's like to be in a threatened community from a global, with a global perspective. And um, I thought I'd read out a poem that I did before, but only the first half because it gets. Um, about Oates and Marsh Lane. It started a year ago. It started early. I got a text message from David Burley. The news they said was quite drastic. They'd frack our village so they could make plastic. Now we were frightened. We were quite scared. We're only a village. We weren't prepared. So we went to the pub and though it was shitty, from out of the chaos we formed a committee. <laughs> We got a brand that said no fracking way, although Rob <laughs> Murphy said no EIA. And we learned about rules and planning and stuff. These were big buggers, the fight would be tough. And we organised meetings, there's so much to do, and we met lots of good people, people like you. And as we marched and we wrote and we talked and we shouted, their wealth and power began to be doubted. Soon Pickering, Unios and all of that crew were learning something we already knew. And then it gets a bit sweary, so I won't go to that. But what we've learned, <laughs> what we've learned as a community is that when you stand up to bullies, you get strength and your community comes behind us. You know, and when, what started off was like, you know, like, oh dear, it's going to happen because the government and they want it. Now people are believing in us and we're putting the signs up and the banners out and we're getting the community right behind us. Derbyshire County Council. When it started two years ago, like Ineos turned up to them and they go, oh yes, put your well wherever you like. As long as you paint your water cabins green and turn the lights down, it'll be fine. Now Derbyshire County Council on Thursday, they agreed a 26 page response to the government's plan to make it permitted development. They're on our side now, we've turned them round. Okay. And our MP, when I was on Hustings with him in 2015, he was all pro-fracking. 
Now, he had the first debate in Westminster Hall for three years about fracking because he's opposing this permitted development, this lunacy. And by having that debate, we got Claire Perry up. And did you hear her? I mean, I was, I was inspired because I did a bit of research on her and I found out that she was from Devizes. And that reminded me of an old limerick. I tweaked it. There was an energy minister from Devizes whose lies were of different sizes. Some were so small you, you'd hardly notice them at all, and others so big they'd win prizes. Uh, I don't know, we did a fracking farmhouse on Claire Perry, and like, and we got, this is like, I can do like Jeremy Corbyn now, because I got mailbox. Peter Allen from Kirby Misperton wrote, on reflection, I took comfort from the thought that the supporters of fracking have not advanced at all with the arguments that they use. There must come a point when these half-truths and untruths will register with everyone who listens to them for what they are. It is so worrying that we have weak-minded people such as Perry in positions of power. Well said Peter Allen from Kirby Visperton. <laughs> Jill Parry from Newcastle under Lyme wrote, She is a moron. Yes! That's right, Jill. This is a problem with the people in charge because they're just taking backhanders and... I looked up more on it, such a beautiful retro word, a, a feeble-minded or degenerate person. And it, it kind of reminded me of the new shale gas commissioner, Natasha Engel. Um, you know, like, you had to laugh when they put her up, didn't you? Because, um, you know, it's a time when the shale gas industry is in a lot of trouble. It's in a, even this weather stopped them fracking in Preston New Road, you know, like, hasn't stopped you lot turning out, it stopped them fracking. But, um, yeah, feeble-minded, um, yeah, Natasha Engel. Right, just at a point when the shale gas industry needed to, like, a hero to stand up from, like Sean Bean. They went and got Mr Bean. Um, she's going to be ripped to pieces, she don't know what she's talking about. Right, oh, mind you, I saw a good argument the other day in The Sun. It said, um, on their thing, they said, fracking is generally considered more environmentally friendly than burning fossil fuels. <laughs> that was on The Sun thing, I, I think <laughs> Natasha might come up with that. But no, you've got to look at this from Ilias' point of view. You know, a year ago, two years ago, we were, we were worried. We were very scared. It's horrible living with thinking that they want to do that to you. Where le we live, they want to bring the trucks down. They want to poison our air. They want to do all that. But now you look at it from Ilias' point of view. OK. Heart Hill. Right, they want to drill in Heart Hill. Heart Hill, they've got planning permission. Heart Hill will take them to the High Court. They can do a judicial review against them. So they're stopping them there. Um, wood sets, twice they've been turned down wood sets. Right, and then Marsh Lane, okay, they've got permission, but we're building an army. We've, we've reached out to the community, we're going to turn the village out, and they just are not going to get the trucks down, and they are not going to drill at Marsh Lane. Absolutely no way. And I won't read out the poem about Sir Jim. But anyway, thank you very much. They're not going to drill at Marsh Lane. Thank you very much. Should we bring her up? Do you guys want to hear from a beautiful woman? Sheila Handy, where are you? She's, she's bringing a special guest to the stage. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for a tireless campaigner from Mr. Springs. Sheila. Uh, hi. Um, the two of us are standing here and we are residents of the That's just 35 minutes from Sheffield. It's eight miles from Doncaster. It's a bit unusual. It's right at the most northern tip of Nottinghamshire. But to get there, you drive through South Yorkshire, and then for a mile you're in Nottinghamshire, and then you're in South Yorkshire again, and then a mile further on you're in North Lincolnshire. And we are going to be surrounded by fracking wells unless we stop them. And we say no. <laughs> We're a tiny community. 
There are only about 600 people that live in our tiny village. We welcome visitors. In our village, it's mainly rural, it's tiny village lanes. There's one road in, there's one road out. It's just about big enough for farm vehicles. It is not big enough, this road, for the wagons with everything they're carrying over narrow bridges for those farmers to be able to continue their business. In our village, children can play safely. It sounds idyllic, I think it is. That's why I've chosen to live there for 30 years. And we are not letting anybody come and take this away from us. They're not gonna take our pure air. They are not gonna poison our water, which is your water. It supplies the whole of the Midlands and down. We're not gonna have our businesses who supply vegetables to your supermarkets we are not having their businesses snatched from them by this toxic industry. We're also surrounded by three sites of special scientific interest. Three. Imagine our shock when the application for exploratory fracking went in. On an old RAF base. This RAF base is just in front of the Jewel in the Crown triple SI site in Nottinghamshire. More of that in a minute. You've all heard of Robin Hood Airport. I'm sure most of you remember RAF Finningley. RAF Finningley used this base as a practice bombing ground. That's right, they flew planes and dropped bombs. And the MOD, the Ministry of Defence, has recorded the fact that there are over tens of thousands, tens of thousands, of unexploded munitions still on this site. A great big boom, but not the boom certain rich gits are expecting. Now, our farm workers that live in the village, they regularly get some of these unexploded munitions stuck on the prongs on their tractors. Everybody runs and the bomb squad comes in. One site visit involving Notts County Council workers and planning committee, they had to vacate the site because a strange ticking was heard. This is exactly where they are planning to drill. This is exactly where they are right now constructing two well pads. And they're really far ahead with that. The spud rig is up and we are getting really frightened. Miz and Triple SI, Miz and Car, I've already said is the jewel in the crown of Knott's Wildlife Trust. It's got bats and rare bats. It's got newts, you know, the great crested ones. All five native species of owl have been sighted on this triple SI. That is unusual. Perhaps more importantly, the long-eared owl, which is an endangered species, has been nesting there successfully and breeding there successfully for the last 10 years. The turtle doves, we used to see them everywhere. There are now, shockingly, just two breeding pairs left in Nottinghamshire. Four turtle doves. Guess where one pair of turtle doves are breeding? That's right, on our triple SI site. 125 metres from the nearest well. I find this disgraceful. I find it sickening. And I'm doing everything I can to stop it. The only place I see turtle doves now is everywhere on Christmas cards. Do you know? That's not right. I've been told to 
suppose. <laughs> Can you hear me? Okay, I'm going to go on a bit about this long-eared owl. It's got long ears. I'm wearing one. This is important. The big ears mean that the usually sensitive owls are extra sensitive to noise and to vibration. So are their prey, mice, foals. Now when they started construction on this site, remember 125 metres away, the noise and the vibration from the diggers and the concrete and the cement was horrendous. It offended our ears, and our ears are small, and we're only humans. The prey are also sensitive to noise, so they will have moved away. This means that the long-eared owls will not have been able to feed up and preen themselves properly and look gorgeous enough to get breeding with their mates. They will not have been in full breeding condition. There was a condition put on by the council that they had to stop work during the bird breeding season. It looks nice in black and white print. Did it happen? Did it help? They carried on working and I am sickened. Everything about this, the water, the air, is wrong. You start by knowing nothing about fracking. You quickly realise how wrong this industry is on so many levels. It's more than wrong, it's downright dangerous. You've heard about the aquifer. Think about the air particulates. Think about the HGV traffic. Think about the breaches that the team at Mizzen are heroically recording every day. to climate change. We know this country is too small, too populated for fracking to ever be safe. But we also believe that gas and fossil fuels need to stay in the ground. Yeah! And that we urgently need to invest in onshore and offshore wind, in solar, in tidal, all of which has been cut by this reckless conservative government. Thousands of businesses going under because of cuts to solar. The onshore wind industry crippled because of a neglectful government. Yet we continue to subsidize the oil and gas industries which are killing our planet and handing over to fracking companies the rights to drill under our land, our homes, our communities, our national parks. And as we speak, the Tories are attempting to weaken our rights even further, to give the failing fracking industry ultimate power over local people. It wants to change the rules so that fracking companies can drill wherever they like without having to obtain planning permission. These proposals would allow drilling to be classified as permitted development, a category normally designed for putting up a garden shed. <coughs> this is brazen abuse of the law. And they're doing this because they know communities don't want fracking. They know if they ask local people, we will say no. There is nowhere in this country that shale gas applications have gone unopposed. Yet as concerned citizens have sought to raise their concerns, this government has changed the law, has moved the goalposts, has empowered the wealthy and disenfranchised the many. So we must resist any changes that weaken our rights and strengthen theirs. 
We must ensure the right to peaceful protest is always protected. And that... overstretched police are not dragged into a battle that is not theirs to fight. We must ensure that those who exercise their right to protest are never criminalised. And we must resist any attempts to bring fracking to South Yorkshire and show solidarity with all sites across our country. Because this is not a NIMBY issue. This is not just a not in my backyard campaign. We oppose fracking wherever it takes place and we will stand together united in our opposition. sure that opposition is heard in Westminster, but that opposition will be heard because of you. Because you have come together today and you have and will continue to stand up in your own communities and show solidarity with others. All those of you who have reasoned, rationalised and determined that there is only one sensible conclusion, that onshore shale exploration has no place in the UK. So thank you to everyone who's come together. Thank you to Jenny and all the organisers that have brought you together to make your voices heard. <laughs> to those of you who continue to speak up, who continue to speak truth to power, who continue to hold us as elected officials to account, and always remember, it only takes one voice at the right pitch to start an avalanche. We are not criminals. Protecting the earth is not a crime. We'll hear more about that later. But in the meantime, this is a universal issue. It is facing everybody. Some countries are cutting back on fossil fuels. They're divesting from that. And you know why that is? Because they are worried about climate change. Because they have made commitments. Uh, in Paris, in other places around the world, people have talked about this. Some countries have stepped forward and have invested in green energies, they've invested in renewables because they want to bring that threat down. But in this country, in places like Hart Hill, where our next speaker's from, they're facing injunctions brought against them. In places like Misson, in places like Tinker, at places like PR. So we need to say no. We need to say we're going to take on the big boys. We need to say we are not scared. Your fear is our strength. And this lady has given me strength. She shows no fear. I want to introduce you to Deborah Gibson. You said I never showed no fear. I'm shaking like a leaf here. <laughs> Anyhow, I have a speech. So, we say no, and we've been saying no for quite some time. How far have we come? Years ago, they tried to frack. There was an earthquake. There's been no fracking since. We're on the cusp of a new frack, but it ain't gonna happen because we are gonna put a stop to it. I think fracking is going to cover the earth. On good days, and these come more often now, I think we're going to win. We are going to win. We are winning. At the moment, there are injunctions flying around. Just look at them. It just shows how much we're hurting these companies, that they want to put a stop to us. We are hurting them. And actually, we're making use of the law too. 
We have our own injunctions and we're trying to make them work and they will work. So, my name is Deborah Gibson and I live in Hartill. We've held our videos for over a year now. This was through the Rotherham Planning Committee. It was through the undemocratic farce that is the Planning Inspector at Public Inquiry. And we're still holding them off with loads and loads and loads of support and financial help. If you want to help us, just look for our GoFundMe page, Heart Hill Against Fracking GoFundMe page. We're still holding them off with our own legal process. They can't start until we finish this process. Woo! You are the anti-fracking community. You know the one that Claire Perry talked about, the travelling circus? You are the ones who've got passion, commitment, and we will win. We will put an end to fracking. Let me tell you a little bit about Hartill. It's a small village on the edge of South Yorkshire, and I mean when I say on the edge of South Yorkshire. In a 10-minute drive, we can do all three of Ineos's proposed sites. Hartill, Marsh Lane, and Woodsets. Add an extra half an hour to that drive and we can visit the eye gas sites in North Nottinghamshire, at Misson Springs and at Tinker Lane. And every single one of those sites, there are people with commitment putting an end to those money-grabbing, filthy profiteers who are trying to filth up our villages. <laughs> I'm really proud, actually, to be living in Hartill because it's a border village. And we all know what border places are like, don't we? They are wild. <laughs> so even though this is a single issue campaign, and it's to put an end to fracking everywhere, it can't be fought in isolation. So we're using every single community resource we possibly can. Hartill has had to make links with other villages under threat in our region. Our region has had to make links with other anti-fracking campaigns in the rest of the country. And this country is making links with worldwide anti-fracking and anti-fossil fuel organisations and campaigns. Absolutely worldwide. So we are not in isolation. We are working together. As a single issue worldwide, it takes place in the wider fossil fuel and climate change agenda. And the more opposition there is to fracking and coal bed methane and tar sand extraction, the greater the political and legal pressure there is for us to go away, to lie down and let it happen. As a single issue campaign, we have to pay attention to the wider human rights issues as well, of who owns our democracy. As I say, it's a single issue, non-political campaign that's rooted in our country's grand tradition of civil disobedience as a tool of social and global change. It is that important. <laughs> Losing the rest of my speech here. By now, information about the dangers of fracking is readily available. And it comes from first-hand experience and from peer-reviewed scientific papers, which this government appears intent on ignoring and denying. Chemical toxicity, we all know about that. Radioactive harms, we know about that. Earthquake dangers, we've experienced that. Threats to our land, our air and our water, and all of these are real and present dangers with this industry. And if this means nothing to you, let me tell you your homes are at risk. If this means something to you, your homes being at risk, let me tell you it does mean something to insurers who have developed packages of home insurance, especially for those in the sacrifice zones. If this means nothing to you, let me tell you your food is at risk. If this means nothing to you, let me tell you your health is at risk. If this means nothing to you, let me tell you your children's futures are at risk. Their children's futures are at risk, their grandchildren's grandchildren's futures are at risk. It is that important. Yeah. Don't take my word for it. 
If you don't know anything about fracking yet, please look it up. Just look up fracking dangers, you'll wet your pants. <laughs> so, I don't want to leave you on a negative, what can you do about it? Well, you can do what I've done and join a local campaign group. There are many ways in which you can contribute. I promise you don't have to go to the front line, although if that is your inclination, you can do. You don't have to get arrested on the front line, although if that is your inclination, you can do. I've been there. It's okay. I survived. You can write letters to politicians. You can contact media outlets. You can organise events like this one. And if none of that is your skill set, you can make tea and cakes. This campaign runs on tea and cakes. You can deliver the leaflets. You can con con constructively comment online. There's an awful lot of constructive comments online. Let's make it ours. You'll have good days, and I promise you these, come, these will come more often. The longer you're involved, you know we will win. We are winning. There will be a region, there will be a country, and there will be a world that has no fracking, and we'll be well on our way to a safer life. We say no. 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 Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Deborah Gibson. Um, amazing to have you here today. And I know um, how much it meant to Ross, actually, who's been organising this with me, um, for you to be here and to speak. Um, Ross lives at the moment in the woods, Tinker Lane, near Blythe, um, near uh, Barnby Moor. And they've got a real fight on their hands there. Um, I think it's accurate to say it's kind of like Toryville and People aren't getting up as much as they really, really should be to fight fracking. I know that people want to, people are learning more, and people who are learning more are coming forward to do more about it. Uh, but these places, beautiful places out east from Sheffield that I've never been to before, um, I would advise you to go there. I would just say go to these places, go to uh, Marsh Lane if you've never been there, it's stunning. Go to Heart Hill if you've never been there, it's beautiful. Go to um, Woodsets, and Woodsets is really close to my heart. Um, Phoebe's dad, uh, Matt, his, his cousins grew up there, right next to where the fracking pad is set to be in Woodsets, where Ineos wants to frack, okay? Ineos don't want to frack for gas for us to put in our homes to heat our homes. They openly admit they want to frack for gas to make plastic with. Okay? We don't need more plastic at all. Okay. Um, the next people that I'm going to introduce um, are from trade unions or the trade union movement. Um, so we've got Jenny Patient and James Eden uh, both coming to speak to us. Um, Jenny's from Unite or representing Unite today and James is from the Chesterfield Trade Union Council so I'd like to welcome them both. It's really important that we get together to fight fracking. If you can lobby your union, get them to represent you and your views, that's so important to this movement. Do whatever you can, okay? So welcome to Jenny and James. Thank you. Yes, I'm Jenny Patient. I'm speaking on behalf of Unite the Union today, where I'm an activist in a local branch and a researcher for my PhD. And I want to tell you a story about what happened on Tuesday. I was with the um, Unite full-time officials in Leeds, uh, who are members of the Low Carbon Task Force. This is for Yorkshire and Humber, and it's been organised by the unions. We were talking about the floods, the climate change floods, um, that hit Leeds in Christmas 2015. And the, the Unite officials told me how an engineering company had had to close its plant on Kirkstall Road in the aftermath of the floods with the loss of around 100 well-paid, highly skilled jobs. Several generations of employment had happened in that plant. And all... They also lost all the pride that came from actually making things, making the car parts that were in the cars that their neighbours drove. In this plant, the workers put forward a plan to keep the jobs, but the company moved the production elsewhere. 
This is what climate change looks like. And these United officials are very clear that this was due to climate change. These people are desperate to make sure that similar disasters don't happen again. Communities losing out through job losses in which those affected have no say. So this is where they're coming from, where we're coming from in the trade union movement. So Unite and other unions are organising a training course for union reps in the most polluting industries in our, in our region. And we're going to find out on that course about the transition that's needed to meet the Paris Agreement. And workers will start negotiating with their employers for a low carbon future. And the IPCC report on climate change and how we meet 1.5 degrees limit has been a wake-up call this week, showing us how urgent this is, how enormous this is, but how feasible this task is. So I'm glad to say that Unite is clearly against fracking as part of this fight against climate change. And Unite has produced an anti-fracking toolkit, which is rather a marvellous thing, I have to say. It's a guide to the myths of fracking and how to organise against it. And in, in the forward of this, this toolkit, um, our Assistant General Secretary, a woman called Gail Carmel, says, Despite industrial claims to the contrary, there is no desperate need for the extraction of oil or gas for these locations to bolster the long-term security of supply of these resources. And sums it up, it is pure greed over the will of the people. So I'm pleased to see that kind of statement there, that kind of um, campaign happening. And the United Toolkit also draws attention to something else we've heard about today and what happens to the, in the future if frac fracking sites, after they've been, stopped being useful, in the US they've become long-term storage for toxic chemicals, rusting abandoned equipment. And the report says, the Toolkit says, Unite believes the development of such sites is far from sustainable and puts at health the risks that puts at risk the health and well-being of residents, who may well be our members as well. So today I bring solidarity from Britain's largest trade union, Unite, which is committed to helping you stop fracking. And you can... You can find this wonderful anti-fracking toolkit on the Sheffield Climate Alliance website. Thank you. Can I echo Jenny's points about jobs? Because trade unions are about jobs, they're about defending their members' jobs. And one of the great lies of the frackers, of Ineos, of Quadrilla, the other fracking companies, is that their investment will bring jobs to our communities. And it's a complete and utter lie. Those of us who are campaigning in North East Derbyshire around Eckington, we had a, a meeting with Tom Pickering of Ineos in the big uh, community hall in Eckington last year and we wiped the floor with him. Uh, he tried to put forward an argument in favour of fracking. Part of that meeting, one of the questions was from the floor was to Tom Pickering was, uh, how many jobs have Ineos brought to Marsh Lane and to Eckington? Because at that time they were working already inside that community, carrying out the testing, the seismic testing in that community. And when he was asked that job, how many local jobs has your activity brought in the community? He said, his first answer was, I'm not quite sure. He was asked again and said, uh, not many. And then he was asked again and said, actually none. And that's the truth of it. These frackers are simply there to fill the pockets of their shareholders. They're not interested in jobs. What we need in our communities and in our economy are green jobs, climate jobs, investment in renewable technology. And that's why I absolutely applaud and congratulate the policy speech made at the Labour Party conference by Jeremy Corbyn a few weeks ago when he pledged the new Labour government when it's elected for 700,000 climate jobs, jobs that will transform our communities in those technologies for the future, not in the old technologies, the polluting technologies of the past, but the technology we need to build a true and equal society. And that's really important. But trade unionists aren't just about campaigning against jobs, we're also about campaigning in our broader communities. And I want to 
refer back to the fantastic contribution from Grace, the school uh, a student a few minutes ago, talking about how in schools, young children, young people are taking on the arguments about fracking. Young people have seen, they've seen them, they've stuff on television about plastic and pollution. Yeah. They know about this. When Ineos come into our communities, into our schools, saying they're doing good in our community, that is a lie. What Ineos are trying to do in every school in this country, you may not know this, they've got an initiative called the Daily Mile. They dress it up in terms of a healthy future for our kids, but it's pushing pro-fracking propaganda into every school. And therefore I commend and applaud one of our great unions, the National Union of Teachers, who at the instigation of a man who's not here today, Simon Murch, the executive member for this city, she Sheffield, at the National Executive last week, put a position and won that union to a position to campaign in every school in this country against Ineos and their Daily Mile proposals in our primary schools. And that gives a very good example of the sort of things our unions must be doing. And thirdly and lastly, our trade unions have always been fighters for social justice. Sometimes we have to argue inside our unions why we need to be fighters for social justice. Just as we had to argue with some of our unions now about why they need to oppose fracking. But we've always taken on the big campaigns, whether it's been apartheid in South Africa, discrimination against the LGBT people, anti-racism. These are the big issues we take up in our trade unions. And that's why we have to take up and fight for the issue of fracking and defending our environment and our community. And also, we have experienced the trade union movement of our people, our members. When we we fight back being hammered by the law, being hammered unjustly, which is why I want to do something very old fashioned at this meeting here today. I want to do something we all do in Labour movement meetings, which is take a vote. And the vote I want to take is a vote of solidarity, to send a solidarity greeting to Rich, to Richard, and to Simon, the three anti fracking protectors who have been put into prison by a judge whose family has shares in the oil and gas business. These are the people who put our are protected in Britain. So I want you all to raise your hands when I do. All those who want to send a message of support and solidarity to our three anti-fracking protesters, let's show our hands now. And by acclamation, we say solidarity to the anti-frackers and we say no fracking way. No fracking way! No fracking way! No fracking way! No fracking way! And lastly and finally, I want to echo what David from Marsh Lane said, because here in Sheffield and in my town Chesterfield in North Derbyshire and South Yorkshire, we have in our immediate vicinity three key f sites, don't we? We've got Hart Hill, Woodsets and Marsh Lane, which are in Derbyshire. And when Ineos tried to come into those communities, tried to turn the first sod in a field to put the first bag of concrete down to lay a base for a fracking drill. We need to make sure, in Dave Kestevin's word, there is an army on the streets to stop them. That means we have a particular responsibility here in the towns of South Yorkshire. We have big population centres. Our movement needs to step up to the plate to make sure we mobilise, not on our tens, not on our hundreds, but in our thousands and tens of thousands on the streets to send the frackers packing. Thank you very much. Solidarity. When you come together with one voice, you can change the world, and we know that, and we know they can fight. Now, has anyone brought any bubbles? Uh, maybe a few people. There's the bubbles. We were going to have a mass bubble blow, in, in kind of like to talk about the clean air. But instead, I'm going to bring on Rev Debs. She's full of air, really good air. She's a laughter therapist. She's a multi-faith vicar. She's one of the most fun people I've ever met on this campaign. She's a little bit mad. So put your hands together, give her a massive welcome, Reverend Dex! I'm going all rock star, 
I'm afraid. Hello, my lovelies! My name is Rev Debs. So for those of you that thought it was the Vicar of Dibley, I really am sorry. I could see you got your autograph books out, so sorry about that. Right, my bit. I love audience participation, please. And don't worry, that doesn't involve collection plates being passed around. But any checks could be made payable to Rev Deb's Holiday Fund. And everything would be gratefully accepted. Right, we're going to warm ourselves up a little bit with a song. And this song is If the Fracking and you know it right so we all know this song just we're changing that bit so if you all want to sing along if the fracking and you know it stamp your feet if the fracking and you know it stamp your feet if the fracking and you know it and you really want to slow it if the fracking and you know it stamp your feet if the fracking and you know it, clap your hands. If the fracking and you know it, clap your hands. If the fracking and you know it, and you really want to slow it. If the fracking and you know it, clap your hands. If the fracking and you know it, shout no way, no way. If the fracking and you know it, shout no way. No way! If the fracking and you know it and you really want to slow it If the fracking and you know it, shout no way! No way! Well, I come to you from over the border Oh, sorry oh. Um, So, um, so uh, young uh, Giles Robinson, where are you? Giles Robinson, okay We need to just look around and um, try and there might be a um, small child that we need to look for. You found him. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. I come from over the border. We come from Sherwood Forest. And I have brought the Sherwood Outlaws with me. And Robin says, not in my heart. Right. Now we've warmed up, I would like you to do another thing for me, please. When I raise my hand, I want you to shout, because we said no. So can we have a little try of that, right? After three, because we said no. Sorry, that ain't cutting it. A little bit louder. Because we said no! Right. I was posed a question. What would life be like five years from now? Five years from now, when we have stopped this abomination, this crime against humanity known as fracking. Right. Five years' time, I will be walking through the beautiful and majestic Sherwood Forest, knowing that this ancient forest is safe, that my family, my friends, and the hundreds of people, and I, had a big part in that. Because we said no! I will look back in pride and reflect upon the life-changing events, the empowerment, the confidence that people gained from this movement, knowing that we worked together, combining our energies, and we made a real difference. I will look back on how people grew. Because we said no! I will reminisce about meeting some of the most amazing, inspirational, and dedicated people. How my family and I have made lifelong friendships. The laughter, the tears,
just the love and fears that we have shared coming together and being part of making social history. And most important, well not most importantly, but what I think is amazing is we've brought back a sense of community. Because we said no! We can all look back and know that we have saved our beautiful land for our children, for our grandchildren and future generations. And what a legacy we will leave. This one I want you to shout really, really loud and proud because you've all been part of this. Because we said no! Just bear with me, I need big glasses for this bit. <laughs> Right, this has been written by my long-suffering husband, Carl, bless him. Upon the boughs of the mighty oak, green leaves once there grew. Centuries of time have passed, mysteries that the old oak knew. Men have come and men have gone, the old oak he remained. Then de developers with their plans arrive, the old oak is treated with disdain. Men with axes and with saws hack away the past to make way for so-called progress and buildings not meant to last. Politicians' bureaucracy, their master plan is brewing till all secrets of the ancient past lay fallen and in ruin. But Mother Earth comes back healing with all her nature powers and in the years after man she fills the land with trees and flowers. Right, nearly done. Right, now we are coming forward five years into the here and, uh, sorry, we're not coming forward at all. We're rewinding, don't listen to me. We're rewinding five years back to the here and now. And I've got one last thing to ask of you. I want you to shout as loud as you possibly can. One love. And it's got to be at the top of our voices so that our brothers can hear us at Preston Prison and our family can hear us at PNR and let them know they are in our hearts. One! Right. Thank you very much for listening to me. May your gods go with you protect you and watch over you. Thank you. Okay, amazing. Thank you to Red Debs. Um, she's an absolute star. You might notice me walking around like this with my phone. Um, I'm live streaming. So just a massive cheer for Red Debs. Um, and yeah, we've had a couple of mentions um, about the PNR3, the FRAC34, these are hashtags you can use. Um, we're thinking about our friends who are in prison wrongly, and we know just how wrong that is. Um, we understand now more than we did before about the motivations behind putting them in prison, which is so unjust, so unfair. These are peaceful protesters. Roscoe is a friend of mine and he would have been organising this event today with us. He would have been part of our team. He would have been here doing something amazing and crazy. Um, back in April, he ran the Sheffield Half Marathon with a fracking rig on his head. Did anyone see him? He was really at the front. He was super, super fast. I was quite amazed. Um, and he shaved his head at our event in February to raise money for the anti-fracking campaign. Okay, this is, these are people really doing anything within their power to fight fracking, okay? And if people you know are doing that, just think, could you do a little bit more? Could you do something? Have you got a bit more time? Can you put some more of yourself into this campaign? Because we need you, okay? I'm going to introduce Sarah Jane Palmer, who is a long-term friend of mine. I've known her for years. Um, and she is also Roscoe's partner. And she's going to bring her message here to us today. So thank you so much, Sarah Jane. Um, 
So in July 2017, myself and Roscoe, along with many others, went to PNR to help the local community protect their homes and environment from the fracking industry. Together with lots of other campaigners, we successfully blocked a convoy of trucks carrying fracking equipment for four days. Yeah. <laughs> so this kind of peaceful demonstration actually had a huge impact. So for those of you that don't know Roscoe, he is a kind and loving individual. He is relentlessly optimistic, as quoted by his barrister, with a positive outlook on all that comes his way. He is fearless and passionate, and that is why I love him so much. We had no idea that for just sitting on a lorry, a 16-month custodial sentence would be given. It was only when the trial started at the beginning of September did we realise how serious this potentially was. Roscoe prepared so much for the worst case scenario, mainly so that we wouldn't have to pick up the pieces if he did get sent to prison. I honestly didn't think he would get sent to prison, so it was a real shock. Um, before the sentencing, we spent as much time as we could outside, wild swimming, sleeping outside on, the, on, on clear nights, in between running around frantically trying not to panic and prepare and sort things out. The sentencing, as you can imagine, was so shocking. Communication became virtually impossible for the first 10 days of him being sent down. We got snippets of information through the barrister, but that was it. But now it's a lot easier. I get fairly regular calls from him. In fact, I missed a call when there was someone was speaking earlier. Um, <laughs> so, um, and I've been to visit him twice. So an update on how they all are, all three of them. They are really well. They thank everyone for their letters of support. Between all three, they have had hundreds of letters of support from right across the UK to Switzerland, Poland, Portugal, Spain and France. They apologise for not being able to respond as they only get one letter a week to send out. Roscoe has told me that he's been putting up the letters and the pictures on his cell wall using toothpaste. <laughs> These letters keep them really strong and they are all feeling more loved now than ever. I would just like to say thank you to everyone who's shown and continue to show support in whatever way you can, no matter how big or small, it really helps. An appeal has been moved forward really quickly to Wednesday next week and I will be going down to the Court of Appeal in London. This is another challenging time to face which is full of uncertainty. So his message to everyone is this, get involved, don't be put off, we do have an, an urgent situation on our hands here in the UK and around Sheffield. We can all rise up together to make a shift and a change. We can and we will create a safer, more sustainable future for the next generation if enough of us stand up and take action. Now is not the time for, compl for complacency, now is the time for positive action. Please get involved in whatever way you can. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, to put your hands together once more for Sarah, but also the PR3. Three, the three! Three, the three! Three, the three! three, the three. Look, guys. Guys, I also want to mention Julian, he was also there. I mean, it was, it was four people that have served prison time for this. This is the way they are policing us. But moving on from that, there's a gentleman coming come to the stage. He's worked tirelessly, uh, tirelessly across this whole region for many, many years. He is a fountain of knowledge, an oracle of fracking. He can help you in many, many ways. I would like to welcome Dave Burley, a friend of mine who I've had the pleasure of working alongside, to tell you a little bit more about this region and what you can do to help stop fracking. Dave Perry! Good evening. <laughs> Jenny, I need your help, Jenny, I need your help. Okay. Thanks for the welcome, brilliant. Uh, I always like a warm hand on my entrance, so thank you. I think we need to applaud some people here today. Uh, there are thousands of people across our country fighting fracking. So let's warm our hands up and 
congratulate all those thousands of people who are doing their bit. And say thank you to those who organised this. We've had this before, but blimey, they have worked hard at this for many, many months. Well done, those who organised it and made this happen. And thank you to the speakers. What awesome speakers up till now. I've got to follow Sarah Jane. That, that's a toughie. That, I was giving you tears over there. That's a toughie. Um, but mainly, congratulations, congratulations to all of you for being here. Well done. It forecast rain, but you came, and we kept the rain away. Now, I've got some news for you, okay? We're not fighting fracking, we're beating fracking. <laughs> now, my colleague in Frackfish, South Yorkshire, Dave Shaw, I think maybe in the mothership over there, we sat down four or five years ago, I forget now, and we tried to work out what needed to happen in this country to stop fracking. And we came up with a few ideas, and thank goodness things are happening. Uh, Ex-President Lyndon B. Johnson once said, it's all about arithmetic, it's all about numbers. Whether it's numbers on the streets or numbers in the House of Commons, it's all about numbers. But we knew we had to somehow get all the parties to be anti-fracking. Is there anyone here from the Green Party? Yay! Hey, five years ago, the only party in this country against fracking was the Green Party. Well done, you were right. Yeah. We knew this had to be a grassroots of campaign to influence thousands, to inform Middle England, just like they did with the poll tax, to educate councillors, to persuade them, local parties to persuade them, unions and MPs. It had to become an election issue. We thought it may not be possible. In 2014, the East Midlands Lib Dems passed a motion to oppose fracking. In 2016, the National Lib Dems passed a motion to oppose fracking. In 2016, the Labour Conference announced they would ban fracking. It's coming, it's happening. The SNP are against fracking. Plaid Kimru, is that right, in Wales? They're against fracking. Sinn Féin are against fracking. Everybody except the DUP and the Conservatives party in the in Parliament are against fracking. But look what's happening. We're getting Conservative councillors now against fracking. We're now getting some Conservative MPs against fracking. It's amazing. I want to just divert briefly um, and talk about Rotherham Council, where I come from. They have passed a motion to oppose fracking on council land and they are the only council in the UK to oppose three fracking applications, or shuggers applications, here in South Yorkshire. Well done, Rotherham Council. I was at, Don I was at Doncaster Council uh, meeting a few weeks ago. That was as dull as ditch water, but there you go. Uh, Dave Shaw had a motion to oppose fracking or shell gas fracking in the Doncaster borough and also to oppose the government's plans for permitted development and all the other stuff, to change all the planning rules on, on shell gas. And in that council, in that meeting, not one councillor opposed Dave's motion. Several councillors stood up and said they had never, this is Labour and Tory, they'd never known any issue to have such cross-party agreements in their memory in that council. It was remarkable. We are now getting cross-party agreements at local level, at grassroots. And then we have Marsh Lane, where the Tory Control Council opposed shell gas at Marsh Lane. There is no bigger threat to us than climate change. The air we breathe doesn't recognise boundaries, either county or constituency or uh, country boundaries. You cannot be a NIMBY on climate change. So I'm going to have, I'm going to get rid of NIMBYs. We're going to have a new word now. We're all going to be NOMPs. <laughs> NOMPs, okay? We are all NOMPs. Not on my planet. You're all NOMPs. 30 seconds, you're joking, I'm carrying on. <laughs> I'll miss that bit out, okay. Can I just say, my union, the NUT, are now opposing fracking. Fantastic. Thank you. The, sorry, the National Education Union, wherever you are, brilliant.
I wrote the draft motion, by the way. I call on all parties in our region, Labour, Green, Lib Dem, uh, and Conservative, to put aside differences, which you all have, but come together on this one issue and work together to fight fracking in our region. This is a family, and we have a responsibility to keep care of ourselves, whether it's against fracking or whether we have other issues. What can we do? Well, what we can do today is, we can go down to Dina, we can get involved in the workshops, there's a Q&A &A session, there's all sorts going on, please go down there when I finish in about two hours time. <laughs> Join a local group, put on an event, bake a cake, go to this stall over there, buy a t-shirt, buy a sweatshirt, buy a badge. Can you bring that cheap one? <laughs> staff, honestly. Next week, I think, or week after, we're going to be launching thousands of this leaflet. It won't be this size, it won't be this colour, and the words are different, but this is what it is. On one side, it gives you uh, ten quick facts about fracking for anybody to read. On the back, there are things to do. And we want to encourage everybody to Follow our campaign, which we launched a couple of years ago, Do Your Street. Over there, at the Mothership, you can sign up to take leaflets and deliver to your street, or your village, or your community. It also tells you to write to your MP. We'll launch this next week, and you can get these out in their thousands to your communities. Okay. And then we need to spread the word. Now, next Saturday was our, our next regional meeting in this region. We've cancelled it because we want people to go to PNR for the national rally next Saturday. Please go there. Now then, the last thing. The MP for North East Derbyshire, uh, Lee Rowley, said to uh, a meeting with Tory MPs a while ago that the anti-fracking lion has not yet roared. It is time for us to roar. So, I'm going to show you what we're going to do. You're going to roar. I'm going to count down three, two, one, and then we roar. And I want to hear the biggest roar because they need to hear it over in Darnell, over in Doncaster, down in Nottingham. They need to hear it, okay? Are we ready for this? The biggest roar you can. And I'm louder than you. So, three, two, one, roar! Now, <laughs> detention. Now, louder than that, come on. Three, two, one. <laughs> you over there, you're not roaring. One last one. The loudest, come on, the loudest. They've got to hear us, and we're going to keep doing this. We need to be heard. We are being heard. We're changing. We're changing things. Three, two, one. <laughs> Thank you, good night.